Assalamu alaikum students, how are you? Hope you all are good. And today we are going to learn the lipids. As you all know that we have studied the biological molecules. In biological molecules we have studied what we have studied? We have studied carbohydrates, we have studied the lipid proteins, and now we are going to study the third type of molecule which is biomolecule which is known as a lipids. And the, this is and what, how it is important in the life of living organisms, we are going to study about this. Okay? So let me share the file for with you that will help us to describe and hope you are doing well and when you watch this presentation, hope you learn a lot about the course and the topics. So hope, I hope you will come soon and enjoy the and learn with me or we'll start the lectures. together. Okay. It's processing the <clears throat> hope you will hear my voice very clearly as you all know that this mic is Working. I hope this mic is working. It seems that it's working. Okay, it's loaded now. So we studied the bio elements previously, then we studied the proteins, carbohydrates. Now we are heading towards the study of lipids. So first of all, we need to define the lipids. What are the lipids? Lipids are molecules that contain hydrocarbons and make up the building blocks of the structure and function of living cells. Examples of lipids include fats, oils, waxes, certain vitamins such as vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K are all like of lipids, hormones and most of the cell membranes that are not made up of the proteins. So this is the proper definition of lipids where you can see that these are, there are the lipids are composed of a combination of our attachment of hydrogen and carbon items together and making uh, are very much helpful for the building block of the structure and the living cells. So I gave you the examples of these pets, wild swixes, and we will discuss all these lipids or all these branches or all these uh, examples in detail. So here the typical structure of this lipids and here you can see this how the classify how the lipids are classified you can see here this is a typical structure of the cell membrane part of the cell membrane which shows that how the lipids are, are present there this this is the fatty acids this is glycerol this this part is the phosphate and this part part is the choline so these are all the parts of the uh, you can say lipids According to the classification of the lipids, lipids are classified into four major parts fatty acids, glycerides, non glycerides, and complex lipids. In fatty acids, they are again divided into two main parts saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. While glycerides, glycerides are divided again into two main parts neutral glycerides and partial glycerides. Another non glycerides lipid is consists of waxes and sphenolipids, steroids. Sphenolipids again divided into sphingno, 
sphingomyelin and glycolipids while this complex appears to consist of the lipoprotein so these this is the classification general classification of lipids but we are not going to study the whole lipids but because this will be uh, in detail this is not the course content more majorly there are some something will be omitted and few or most important uh, parts of lipids we will study here so let's start this is again the classification of lipids on the basis of the composition and function on the basis of composition the lipids are divided into three main parts simple lipids complex lipids and tri lipids while on the basis of function these again divided into three main parts like but their name is changed storage lipids their function is to store and structural lipids their function is to formation of the structures and their uh, lipids are the signals functioning as signals are as a function of the pigment are i mean function of the pigment so this is uh, the, the classification of lipids are based on two major things so we are mostly uh, we will define few of them from the storage type uh, composition type and few of them will be defined in the uh, functions type so we will cover most of them inshallah so if we want to go for the introduction of the lipids the lipids are the heterogeneous group of compounds related to the fatty acids they are insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents such as ether alcohol chloroform and benzene so you must you all know you must know that all the lipids are dissolved in water they need the other solvents to be solved such as ether alcohol chloroform and benzene are required to solve them or to dissolve them but the for example if you put the oil on the water in the water you will not dilute or you will not you will see the different layers of water and oil they cannot be mixed or water oil cannot be dissolved in the water oil is a type of the lipid so lipids include the fats oils waxes cholesterol and other compounds lipids are hydrophobic compounds or components of the cellular membrane so here again we see see that uh, the lipids are present in the cellular membrane as a functioning part and storage in the as a storage form they are fats oils waxes cholesterol so hydrophobic means water hating means they cannot be dissolved in the water lipids are also used in used to store the energy so they can be they can be stored in the lipids another uh, definition or we can go in detail about the lipids that because of the higher proportion of the carbon and hydrogen bonds that's why we call them hydrated carbons so uh, hydrogen hydrocarbons so the, because of their proportion is higher of carbon and hydrogen bonds so uh, in very low proportion of oxygen lipids store double the amount of energy as compared to the some amount of the uh, amount of any carbohydrates you must know that if the concentration or the rate of oxygen is greater in few organic few chemicals such as carbohydrates so if the you know that carbohydrates contains the higher rate of oxygen that's why uh, and the lipids contain the lower rate of the proportion of the oxygen that's why it says that uh, it has been uh, estimated that the energy in the lipids is higher as compared to the carbohydrates but the carbohydrates are can readily be dissolved in water and can give, give us the energy but the lipids cannot lipids are stored in our body and unless we have the carbohydrates we cannot use the lipids for the energy otherwise when the carbohydrates are finished our carbohydrates we don't have the glucose in our body 
So our body requires the energy. So then we go towards the lipids further for getting the energy. So small amount of energy can give us a larger amount of energy. Small amount of fat can give us a larger amount of energy. Some lipids provide insulation against the atmosphere and cold and also against water proof material. What does mean? Insulation. Uh, does the lipids give us the insulation against the atmosphere heat and cold? Yes. How you know the uh, lamp and lamp has a thick fur outside its body and with, uh, inside the fur there is a thick layer of the lipids available on their skin. So which is utilized for the uh, protection uh, from the heat and cold and by this help they can uh, be survived uh, in pure uh, for their life. And they are also the waterproof material because no water is, they cannot dissolve the water so they can also not attach the, the water cannot be attached with the uh, lipids. And vexes in the exoskeleton of insects and cutin, an additional protective layer on the cuticle of epidermis of uh, some plants, organs, leaves, fruits, seeds, etc. also come in some of the, the main examples. What about the vexes? Vexes are the exoskeleton of the insects. Few insects release the vexes on their exoskeleton to protect them from the other uh, harmful material or uh, prey which prey on them. And also they have the protective layer of the cuticle of, you can say that this is the epidermis of uh, some plant organs such as leaves, roots and seeds also possess some vexes of, of, of the vexes over their body to uh, for the protection. And we will study these things in later on uh, in the section, vexes section in detail. So what about the classification of lipids? The classification of lipids are, these are the classified, uh, lipids are classified. And we already studied the class, what are the classification of lipids and we, I described you according to function and according to their composition. But here in your textbook, the, what are the most important topics of the lipids are available. So we would only study those topics or those part of the classification of the lipids. We are, we are not going to study them in detail all the parts of the lipids, but we are going to study the most important parts of the lipids. So first most important part is the acylglycerol, then the vexes, then third part is the phospholipid, and fourth part is the terpenoid lipid. And tartanyl lipid actually contains the, the three main subparts or sub subparts of the uh, lipid: terpenes, carotenoids, and steroids. So we are going to go in detail about all these studies. First of all, acyl glycerol. Acyl glycerol are composed of glycerol and fatty acids. They are found both in plants and animals. It provides the energy for different metabolic activities. Okay, do you understand this? Are you getting my point? Then this acyl glycerol is the most important part of the lipids and they are composed of the glycerol and fatty acid. And what is the glycerol and fatty acid? We are studying in the next uh, slide. And what is the glycerol and fatty acid? They are found both in animals and plants, you must know that, and they, are, they provide energy for different metabolic activities. And it is estimated that an average person contains approximately 16 kg of fat on their body, which on breakdown can yield us 14,400 kilocalories of the energy. So it means that on average person can possess this type of how much 16 kg of the pain on their body in different forms not in the same form. So most widely spread aside glycerol is triacylglycerol, also called the triglycerides are the neutral lipids. 
chemically acyl glycerols can be defined as the esters of the fatty acids and alcohol. Up now, what we are going to learn about the esters? Now we learn about the esters. Uh, sorry, acyl glycerol. Acyl glycerol. Now we are understanding that what is the esters of the fatty acids? What do what does this mean? That esters of the fatty acids and alcohol. An ester is a compound produced as a result of the chemical reaction of an alcohol with an acid, and a water molecule is released as, a, as shown in below. So you must know that what is the ester? Ester is a compound which is the result of the chemical reaction. When the chemical reaction, such as fatty acids and alcohol, they react with each other, and the final when we get the final result. That final result will be known as an ester, and the bonding between these two uh, compounds, alcohol and acetic acid, will be the ester bond. So, and in, as a byproduct, we also get the water molecule. So, we understood that the acyl glycerol can be defined as the ester ester of the fatty acid and alcohol. Now, this part, the uh, this part of this compound is known as acyl glycerol, ester of the fatty acids and alcohol. It is, this is the fatty acid and this is the alcohol. They combine with each other, they form the ester. And what so we are going to again. Form the water molecule. Okay. In any case, depending as it are stretchings, vine and plants, these may be branched or rings. So there should be a, there might be a difference in the plants and animals. They are present in both, but their structure may be different in plants and animals. Solubility of the fatty acids in organic solvents and they are melting points increase with the increasing number of carbon atoms in water. So you must know that when the number of carbon increases, they are more, they can be more be easily soluble in solvent as compared to the less number of carbons. If we say the two compounds, one is a palmitic, palmitic acid and another one is a butyric acid. Palmitic acid contains 16 carbon while the butyric acid contains the Say four carbon, only four carbon. So, which will be the more soluble uh, in the organic solvent? The C16 palmitic acid is much more soluble in organic solvent than the butyric acid. The melting percent uh, point of the palmitic acid is 63.1 degrees centigrade, as against minus 10 degrees centigrade for the butyric acid. So, you must know this that the melting point is of the uh, palmitic acid is much higher. Okay, so well, now we are going to understand the glycides or triacylglycides. So triglycides are the type of fats found in your blood. This is your uh, blood cells, and these are the different types of the fatty acids present in our body. These HDL, LDL, triglycides, and cholesterol are the different type of the lipids present in our body. So, if when you eat the blood, sorry, when you eat something, your body convert only calories. So, when you eat, your body converts it into calories. But when anybody remains, are so so many things are remain doing much higher. So it doesn't need to use right away into the triglycerides. The triglycerides are stored in your fat cells. Later on, hormones release triglycerides for energy between the meals. So here you can see here that this is the red blood cell and this is the cholesterol compound, cholesterol molecule, which is present inside our the arteries. Okay. Here you can see this how the glycerol and fatty acid, alcohol and fatty acids combine with each other to form the 
triacyl triacyl glycerol. So you can see here that the alcohol and fatty acids are combining with each other. The glycerol and three fatty acids. There are three fatty acids and glycerol. They are combining with each other. One uh, molecule, what molecule is forming here? One molecule is forming here, and one water molecule is forming here. As you know that the water molecule uh, formula of water molecule is H2O. H2O will be taken from the glycerol, and H will be taken from the fatty acids. And then we get, we can see here in the result, this is the triacyl glycerol or an ester which is uh, available here with the uh, bonding between in between each other which is this bonding is known as the ester bonding and three molecules of water has also been released okay so this is the formation of an ester and now fatty acids uh, we are going to define the fatty acid a fatty acid is an is a carboxylic acid with a long alpha alpha chain which is either saturated or unsaturated now we are we will understand that what unsaturated and saturated uh, which is the what is the difference between the saturated and unsaturated why we call it the saturated and unsaturated and carboxylic acid means carboxyl compound is attached with the fatty acids and also they are alphatic chains means they are in a series chain the fatty acids are one of the most important components are the triglycerides. Fatty acids contain even number of even number 22 to 30 carbon atoms in the state and the state chain attached with hydrogen and having an acidic group, carboxylic group. As I told you, they are the carboxylic with the alphatic chain. It shows here that it contains the two two to 30 carbon items always fatty acids are always in an even number carbon items are always in an even number and so they are they are items are straight chain attached with the hydrogen and having an acid group carboxylic uh, acid group carboxylic acid group they may be saturated fatty acids uh, now why we are coming towards the definition of the saturated Saturated fatty acids contain the no double bond, no double bond in their chains. These, this complete chain doesn't contain, if that complete chain of 20 to 30 carbon atoms does not contain any double bond between them, they will be known as a saturated fatty acids. And if they contain up to six double bonds in their chain, they are known as unsaturated fatty acids. Okay, this is clear now. Now, what is the difference between the saturated and the unsaturated fatty acids? We are describing it in more detail. Fats containing unsaturated fatty acids are usually liquid at room temperature and are still said to be oils. So you must know that the saturated, unsaturated acids are always in a liquid form. It are known as a, they are said to be in oils. Fats containing the saturated fatty acids are in solids. So saturated fatty acids will always be in solid, while the unsaturated fatty acids will always be in, in the, we can say that in the uh, oils. Unsaturated will be in oils and saturated will be in solids. Animal pets are solid at room temperature, whereas most of the plant pets are at liquids. It means animal cells, animal pets contains the saturated fatty acids while the plant cells plants contains the unsaturated fatty acids fats and oils are lighter than water and have a specific gravity of about 0 0.8 so you must know that all the fats and water has the uh, are the lighter in from lighter in weight from the water that's why when you put the water in the glass before the uh, we, when you put the oil first and then you put the water inside it, then there will be the two layers will be formed after a few minutes. And the upper layer would be would always be the liquid uh, uh, and lower layer will be the water.
they are not crystalline, but some of them crystallize under the specific condition. Okay. Now we are going to learn about the fatty acids classification. So this classification means their structure and where they are formed. The fatty acids, again, we said that they are divided into the saturated and unsaturated. Saturated are solid and unsaturated are in liquid form. The saturated uh, compounds are lauric acid, rustic acid, palmitic acid, and stearic acid. While the unsaturated compounds are monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Monounsaturated is the oleic acid, omega 9, while the polyunsaturated have the omega 6 and omega 3, linoleic acid, linolenic acid, and GLA, GLA, EPA, DHA, and archidonic acid. So these are the different types of fatty acid present in our body and plants body. So we all, they all are required and important fatty acids, uh, fatty acids are important for the healthy person. Now we are coming towards the nexus, excuse me. This is, uh, uh, can be defined as a simple lipids having one molecule of fatty acids forming the ester bond with the molecule, molecule of the long chain of the alcohol. Now it is again coming towards the forming the ester bond, ester formation uh, with the help of the ester bonding within long chain of the alcohol. The fatty acids, vexes are the small, simple lipids having the one molecule of fatty acids. One molecule of fatty acids combined with the long chain of alcohol to form the vexes. And chemically, vexes are the mixture of the long chain of with the odd number of carbon atoms. Here in the, uh, the fatty acids, you can see that the fatty acids are on, uh, always in the even numbers. But vexes are also the type of lipids which are always which contain the number of carbons in odd number from 25 carbon to 35 carbon atoms with the alcohol, ketones, and esters of long chain of fatty acids. The vexes are widespread uh, as protective coating on the fruits and leaves. You, uh, therefore, the fruits and leaves are not dissolved in the water. As you all know that the, inside the fruits and leaves, there are lots of carbohydrates available, which can readily be dissolved in the water. That's why they contain the vexes over their body as a layer to protect those carbohydrates inside their, those water soluble materials inside their body. Some insects also secret the vex, like, uh, like the bees vex or Chinese insect, Chinese insects vex. Vexes protect, uh, vexes protect plants from water loss and abrasive damage. So you must, as I told you earlier, that the water can, should not be lost from the plants. That's why the vexes are the vexes layer are formed over the water. They are they also provide water barrier for insects, birds, and animals such as sheep. This these are some, some pictures of the vex. This, this is the honeybee's vex. This is the Chinese insect vex. These are the plant vexes, and these, this vex is present for the stalks, leaves, and uh, stem. You can see here that this these type of mixes are formed and can be helpful for the plants and animals. Now we are coming to our last topic is the phospholipids. Phospholipids uh, are to the biological point of view is the most important class of lipids. You must know that these are present in the cell membrane of the cell. So cell membrane is present on over the cell, protect the cell, and this cell membrane, if the cell is not available, and all you know that the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Phospholipids are similar to triacylglycerols of an oil, except that one fatty acid is replaced by the phosphate group. So triacylglycerol, the difference in between the triacylglycerol and phospholipids only one fatty acid, which is uh, replaced by the 
password group. One fatty acid, fatty acid in the triacyl glycerol. If we remove the one fatty acid from the triacyl glycerol with the displacement of the phosphate group, we will found it as a phospholipid. The phospholipid molecule consists of the two ends, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic end is those to water loving end, and hydrophobic is a water hating end. Okay, so they are widespread in bacteria, animal, and plant cells, and are frequently associated with the membranes as a regulation of the permeability and transport of processes. Permeability of molecules depend upon these molecules. So this is the picture which shows that the phospholipids. Here you can see this, this is the one part of the cell when we take it, and the between part, this yellow part. Yellow to orange part shows that this is the hydrophilic net. This is in hydrophobic tail, and this is the hydrophilic head. So this head contains the choline and phosphate and glycerol, and this part, tail part contains the fatty acids. So these are the uh, phospholipids. Now we already studied previously that phospholipid is divided into three major subtopics, subparts. Terpenoids is the first part which we are going to study. The terpenoids are the very large and important group of compounds which are made up of the simple living units, isoprenoid units. This unit of by condensation is in different ways gives rise to compounds such as rubber, creatinoid. Steroid, terpenes, etc. So you must know that these are uh, those compounds which give give us the rubber formation of rubber and creatinoids and steroids. Lipids constitute major source of energy and play an important role in the structure of the membranes of the cell and organelles found in the Cell. They also provide insulation, mechanical protection, and uh, protection of water loss from the aggressive damage. Okay, this group of lipids based on the only on the isoprenoid unit as we studied earlier, and small type of uh, terpenes is volatile in nature and produce fragrance. They produce a fragrance. Their function is to produce a fragrance, and they are most of their uh, terpenes are used in the formation of the perfumes. The few important uh, important constituents of the chlorophyll, they are few of them are the important constituent of the chlorophyll molecules. In nature, they are utilized for the synthesis of rubber and latex. Now we are going to study the Steroids. Steroids consist of three six membrane carbon rings A, B, and C, and one five membrane carbon ring which is which is named as a D. These rings are fused together with a total 17 carbon atoms are called the steroid molecule. One of the most important steroid is a cholesterol. Uh, component of animal cell through membrane and a precursor for the synthesis of the number of steroids, sex hormones such as testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Most uh, in the exercise purpose, most of the people who are doing gym for the exercise or building their muscles, they use the steroids for the building their muscles. And the artificial use of uh, steroids is much harmful and can be dangerous too. So they are using the testosterone or they are using the steroids uh, with the uh, advice of the doctor. Don't use the steroids on your own. At your own, you will get the so much disaster effects of the steroids. So there, yeah, a certain amount of the steroids is required for a particular person. It depends upon their age and height and their body size. Body size. This is uh, the general structure of the steroid and you can see here there are, as we studied, 
six member carbon three rings two and three a b and c this is our six rings one two three four five and six one two three four five and six these are the six things it also called the six thing and this also called the six rings and a b c and this this one possesses the only five rings and this is known as a d and it also shows that 17 carbon atoms are present here if you count here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 these are the 16 uh, 17 carbon atoms in the picture what about the cholesterol this is also but it has the carbon atoms in these number and they have the different formula to show that the cholesterol is much uh, uh, different or uh, is a uh, part of the steroid the structure is the same there is the steroid now the second uh, part is the creatinoids the creatinoids contains consists of the fatty acids like carbon chain which are conjugated double bond carrying six member carbon rings at the each end these carbon compounds are pigment found produce red orange yellow green and brown colors in the plants so you must know that the creatinoids are those compounds which are used for the pigment purpose or coloring the various plants some important pigments are the carotene and xanthophyll xanthophyll and carotene are the most important uh, components in the plants and they are used okay. they are said my dear students and i think we have completed our three bio biomolecules and next week we are going to study about the fourth one which is one of nucleic acid and we will see the conjugate molecules also about these uh, biomolecules to understand what is the difference and in between the conjugate molecules and what is their function and why they are formed so hope you will enjoy this lecture and thank you and allah